So what is up guys, you got your boy Jet Stinger here today, and today, 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 we are back with some Reverse 1999 content for you guys here today, and today we're going to be talking about Wind Song. Wind Song is going to be a star mental burst character that is highly, highly anticipated for a pretty cool strat that you can do with her that allows her to accelerate a bunch of damage onto the enemy, and we'll talk about how that's able to be done, talk about her ideal cubes, partners, and everything like that, so let's get right into it, let's talk about what she does with her skills first. So let's start with the ultimate, which is called Long Long Journey. It is a one target debuff that afflicts one, tar uh, one stack of confusion to the target for one round, then enters the mapping status for the round, gains Eureka plus two, converts all incantations to rehabilitation of their matching rank, and then casts them all if able. So this is the main, main strat of Windsong. You want to build up a bunch of two star three star cast of rehabilitation to then fire them off when she does the ultimate that's pretty much all the, that's pretty much the most common way to use the wind song because you just simply want to just build all that up and then you get a bunch a bunch of damage this is really cool because all of her cast of rehabilitation gains the additional effects of the skill which we'll talk about in just a moment so there's a lot a lot of good things that goes with this ultimate it's pretty much just the bursting skill this is her bursting opportunity this is why she is classified as a burst dps let's talk about rehabilitation which is the main damaging skill that we're going to be spamming in lieu with the ultimate so it is a one target attack that gains eureka plus one that deals up to 450 percent mental damage and can spend up to two eureka to gain up to 150 percent of extra damage so looking at this right you can deal up to a potential of 600 percent mental damage on a tier 3 you can deal up to 240 on the tier 1 and you can deal a little bit higher with the tier 2 so it, again it's just a really strong skill so long as you have a 2 eureka which of course is pretty easy to get because she gets eureka plus one from both of her skills which is a little bit of a spoiler but that's not really that really a big of a deal and yeah so she just gets a strong skill and she can convert critical rate to critical damage for the attack. Now this is big because Wind Song does have a lot of ways to get a lot of crit rate and a lot of crit damage, which of course is going to go into the way you build her cube choices and everything like that. So this is going to be a attack that can potentially deal easily within the six figures if you really just optimize her build and you optimize the way that you can get the the uh, the extra effects that you can get her to more crit rate, which we'll talk about in just a second. Next up is Practability, which is a mass attack that grants one stack of Eureka, can deal up to a total of 285% of mental damage to two enemies, and she gains up to three stacks of preparation when song, which is basically whenever you use this skill, this is pretty this is a little bit different than the other precasting skills. Basically, whenever she uses this skill at the varying rarity, she would generate always a one-star cast of rehabilitation but it's going to be of the multiple cast so for example right if you do a two star cast then you get two one star cast of for rehabilitation and it always is generated on the left so that means it's an automatic rank two that's essentially what this is it's a little bit just weird worded a little bit weird so that is that is it but technically this is a little bit better than other pre-existing pre-casting skills because since she's casting them at one to one, the automatic rank up cancels the precast effect. If you guys don't know, precast skills go away the turn that they're activated. So if you use, for example, precast with Spahothea and you don't use that uh, precasting skill, then it disappears from your deck. But in Wind Song's case, if you use a two star of practability, those two one stars are going to rank up and then it's going to keep that skill just activated which is absolutely fan freaking tastic so that's why it is actually a lot better to just kind of spam two stars as opposed to three stars because you still have to kind of dig for that one one star unless you already have it in your card setup but if you don't then it is what it is but that is going to be the main thing there is that this is going to be the skill that one helps you accelerate a, a special effect to her that we're going to talk about in just a moment and it's also going to be the way that you really get your stacks of your rehabilitation card also, this card comes with a really, really good bonus for optimal rotation, and it's because it automatically gives you one precast of practability if you do not own any practability cards in that setup. So that means if you go into your next turn with no practability, then you will generate a precast of practability, automatically giving you a one-star cast 
uh, that you can get into, which you can then get into for another one star cast of for re uh, of the meditation card, which is fantastic. That's really really good for rotation. That's really really good for accelerating to get into more cast of that skill just out of the gate. I think that is a fantastic thing because you basically are always guaranteed to going to be able to generate a rehabilitation card every single turn, no matter what, so long as you use practicability, which is great. So let's talk about her inheritances. Her inheritance is, whenever an ally scores a critical hit with uh, an incantation or an enemy gets a stack of confusion, she will gain one stack of measure to self. Measure is the unique effect that we were just talking about, that I just said this is going to be one of the things you can use to help accelerate to her unique effect. Measure is going to be a thing that we talk about when the buff is explained towards the bottom, so we'll talk about why that's important. And in Sight 2, she gets crit rate plus 10% when she enters the battle. Good. And then in Sight 3, she gets an additional crit rate plus 10% and then crit damage plus 10%. And after casting an ultimate, she gains one stack of Preparation 1 Song, which of course allows her to generate another use of a uh, of card. So, let's talk about it. <clears throat> So, Measure is the unique effect that she gets uh, when she's at Insight 1. And what this effect does is, for every crit that is obtained from allies or Windsong herself, she gets a stack. And this stack is timed independently, so for each stack it just stacks on top of each other. And she gets crit rate plus 3% and crit damage 3% for 2 rounds, up to 15 stacks. So, this can be a little bit tricky to maintain for you to get the full 15. Technically speaking, when you do ult with one song, you quickly gain a lot of measure stacks. And there's also another thing that you can do with her ultimate, which technically does help kind of gain her a few extra stacks of measure. But the whole thing of you really getting into measure, you want to at least be around maybe anywhere between like 10 or 9, depending depending uh, depending on uh, when you want to burst with your ideal timing to burst. But if you can get all 15 stacks of measure, it's crit rate plus 45% and crit damage plus 45%, which is a lot. That's huge. That is very, very, very strong for someone like Winsong that wants to be utilizing as much crit rate into crit damage as possible because of her main damaging skill, rehabilitation. I keep saying this time and time again in the course of this video, is rehabilitation is going to be the skill that you want the most of even though she does convert her other skills into it, still, same thing. You want you want this card. You want this card to get all of the bonuses, all of the effects, and you just want to get all that extra damage. So if you are able to do this, then that's fine. Another cool thing about Measure is uh, with the way that her Eureka works, uh, her ultimate grants you, uh, her Eureka grants you uh, plus two, and her seals also grant you plus one. Since in her uh, in her ultimate, she does not consume Eureka because of the mapping effect, this technically gives her measure. So that is a really, really cool thing there. So uh, any converted um, Eureka goes over to measure, which basically just gives her, you know, an easier time to get into the 15, uh, the 15 stacks for the buff. So that's really, really cool. I do think that is absolutely fantastic. There's that. And of course, the preparation effect is she's going to be able to generate a precast and rehabilitation. And there is no practicability on hand that she would generate a practicability. So she generates one rehabilitation. She generates one practicability if there's no practicabilities in hand, which there shouldn't be because she converts all of the cards over to rehabilitation anyway. So it's a really good way for her not to have any downtime when she's after her ultimate. So that's really just it. So let's talk about portraits. So her portraits is also very good. Um, P1 gives her a modifier buff to the main damage skill, Rehabilitation, which makes it a 200, 290, and 480 with a bonus of 90, 130, 200. So at rank 3, this becomes a 680% skill, which is kind of kind of nutty. So that is a very, very nice boost. And of course, rank 2, rank 1, of course, 290 on this one. And this one becomes, I think, uh, I think this one becomes a 430, I think it becomes a 430. I could be wrong about the math, but uh, actually it could be a 420, my bad, 420. And then this one becomes a 680. So very, very, very strong, um, excuse me, very, very strong skill uh, that it does get here. P2 is also a really, really good one because it gives her, uh, it gives her crit rate to, uh, it gets her I3 to 25% instead of 10%. So basically, when using this off of her insights, it's crit rate plus 25% crit damage plus 25% instead of 10%. So she can start with 35% crit rate just out of the gate, not counting her cube or not counting her, um, her resonance build, which is of course going to be crit. So. E, that's really good. That's really good. It's a, again a more easier way to allow her to cap over to that 
so she can start converting that excess crit rate to crit damage a little bit more easier. Uh, P3 is just more Eureka gained. This again technically counts more for measure stacking because again, any excess Eureka that's gained when she's in her ultimate is converted over to measure. So that your that plus five Eureka is basically five stacks of measure, which of course is good because since uh since uh, her buff is timed independently and it's for two rounds, then you can easily just allow that to be an easy way to get to 15 stacks. So you can get that max 45% crit rate, max 45% crit damage. So that's going to be a little bit easier. Practicability only gets a rank up 1 to 2 incantation. I don't know why there's not a 3, unfortunately. I don't know why that's the case. But again, 180, 230, not bad. And rehabilitation, of course, is more stronger than before. This one becomes a 760 skill at tier 3, which is, again, disgusting. <laughs> so, uh, I think this becomes a 480, and I think this becomes a 330, I believe. So, 330, 480, and 760% um, um, modifier, which is, again, very, very strong. But if you want my honest opinion on where you should stop when it comes to portraits, I do think that you should stop at P2. P2 is the best part because you get that critical rate and critical damage boost, which is going to be fantastic. And then you also get this big boost right here of the rehabilitation, which is, again, a 680% mod, which is still very, very, very strong. So if you're looking for any particular dupes for one song, stop at P2. That's the good stopping point. But if, of course, you want to push any further other than, then go P5. Because 3 and 4, I mean, they're okay boost, but the big thing you really want is, again, the rehabilitation boost. So you're going to want to want that extra rank up. So if you're full on Leviathan, you're going to throw every bit of your resources to try to get the P5, then yeah, go P5. But if you're looking as a good a good number to just say, okay, this is good enough for me so I can save pulls for the next banner or whatever, whatever have you, stop at P2. That's all you really need. That's a good enough boost at P1. It's, of course, going to help you accelerate into more critical rate, into critical damage conversion at P2. So that is going to be very, very good. So that's why I do think there. Now let's talk about the cubes that you can run with her. Now first is going to be her own unique cube for, re for rehabilitation. I don't know why I can't say that word. But uh, basically, this is the effect. It gives a crit rate of 16%, which of course means it's easier for you to stack up to 100% crit rate. And when a character is a star character, incantation might is increased by 5%. And in and around a cast and ultimate, each of the one target attacks incantations and damage dealt is increased by 4% for the rest of the battle, stacking up to 3 times. So of course, if you get this up to P5, it's 8%. It's basically a 25% damage dealt up boost with 5% incantation might up which is I mean that's cool that's cool but another really good option is outside the city outside the city is if after the carrier attacks a one target attack through follow up which technically her attacks are counted as follow up when you use the ultimate she gets critical damage plus 2% and after uh, 10 stacks you get 8% but if it's at P5 you get 5% critical damage which stacks up to 10 times which makes 50% critical damage and you get 12% more critical rate, which makes this 28% critical rate at max. Now, the one thing about outside the city is it does take a little bit of time because you need all 10 to get that extra critical rate. So you might have to consider ulting twice, which isn't technically a wrong thing. But in raid, it can be a little bit tricky unless you purposely use weaker burst so that you don't over push the boss's bar to like dangerous territory where you have to kind of start bursting out a little bit more heavily. That's why outside the city is considered a pretty interesting option. Another interesting option is another story. This is the thing that people use in the CN side. I've asked a few people about this, but uh, they use another story because this is the optimal card that you use for the stacking strat for a win song. While you don't really use the ultimate might, it's really just for this little extra effect here. After the carrier casts a rank 2 to 3 star incantation, damage out up stacking up to 2%, up to 8% max. Of course, this is go to 3 to 6 and then 24% max. With given how easy it is for you to get 2 to 3 star cast of this card, it's very easy to get this 24%. This is just a permanent effect. And when a carrier consumes 2 or more Eureka within the round, get incantation might plus 18%. This also procs as well when using the ultimate. Here's the thing. Technically speaking, even though when she's in her mapping status, she does not consume Eureka, the extra effect of the Eureka being consumed still counts. You just don't lose the Eureka. So you're still consuming that Eureka, you're just not losing it afterwards. So this effect still does proc and you still do get the incantation might 
plus 18% until the end of the round. So that is still something that does proc. So that's why a lot of people do use another story as a valid option for Winsong, because you want to actually use that to stack up a bunch, and then you just fire off, and then you get that 24% damage dealt up, which has been present on for rehabilitation, and out, well, not outside the city, but for rehabilitation, and of course on another story. And of course, Bachelor Might is another easier option that you want to use for 24% just straight up damage out if you have two or more debuffs. And of course, it depends on teammates. Uh, technically, Windsong does get use of this card because um, she does inflict a stack of confusion, which is a negative status. She just needs another external source, so someone like he sold a applying burn or anything like that that can definitely help. That can get you that 24%. It also gives you incantation might plus 18%, which of course is very much important for Windsong because again, you want to get as much damage as you can for that rehabilitation skill. So that is the main thing there, is that you just kinda wanna get that off. Now let's talk about some optimal partners. First things first is gonna be Vila. Vila is a huge, huge partner for Winsong. Now you can use Two Fairy. Two Fairy is also a great partner for her because Two Fairy offers the crit rate reduction and she also offers a bit of crit red. But Vila offers you crit rate and critical damage buff. So, as I mentioned before, the whole goal of Winsong, right? is to get as close or if not over 100% so you can get that access critical rate, access critical damage to start kicking off, right? Vila's going to help with that because she can give her at just P0 30% crit rate, 40% crit damage. That's already a lot, just saying. And Vila's unique song effect, if you don't remember, gives you a modifier increase. This is going to be big. So remember we just talked about her tier 3 being like a 600% modifier? This, this is going to make it 800, which is going to be, you know, a lot of extra damage. So that is why Song of Passion is going to be a really, really good thing for you there. And of course it's going to be the good buff that she needs just to deal a little bit more accelerated damage. Another good option is 37. I know, 37 somehow works in every single team. I know, I know. But the big reason why 37 is also really good is because 37 Axe is a really good measure battery for, for Winsong. If you guys don't know, Genesis and regular attack crits are two individual crits. So if you crit off her skill and crit off of her Genesis effect, which 37 having a decent enough crit rate to achieve this effect, you actually get two stacks of measure instead of one. So this is a really, really good way for you to get some good measure stacks going for your team. So, well, for Wind Song specifically, to allow her to get that higher amount, so to get that higher crit rate, higher crit damage, while she's, of course, building her own stacks. You simply just cast Proctability when Wind Song crits, that's one stack, and then you get another cast from uh, 37 anywhere up to one to two times, that's anywhere up to two to four stacks of measure just like that boom you can end the turn with five stacks of measure which is 15 percent uh 15 percent just right there right that's 15 percent crit rate 15 crit damage just like that boom right easy so that's a really good thing and of course when one song triggers her ultimate and she does all those follow-ups guess what that's your Rika for uh, 37, which is going to make her do her follow-up attack which of course is going to be well worth it and well appreciated Next up is going to be uh, Isode. Isode is another good partner for this because uh, Isode gives critical defense shred, which is one of the biggest in the game. She gives up to 50% uh, critical shred. She doesn't care about the reality defense, obviously, because she's not a reality DPS, but that 50% critical defense shred is going to be huge for Winsaw to capitalize on a lot of damage. Also, when uh, Isode is in her finale status, she can give a stack of power burst every single turn, no matter what. And of course with the ultimate, you can of course get her the, uh, the rousing morale. Now this does give her a strong first cast, but then with the other cast, are going to be a little bit weaker because uh, you're only really consuming your power burst. Also, Vila also gives power burst too if you use two star cast heals of her, or two to three star cast, my bad. So you can actually kind of with a strat like this, with uh, Isode being in um, a finale status and Vila potentially casting a two to three star heal, you can technically give Winsong a fair amount of power burst stacks and then when she casts that ultimate this is gonna have at least a 25% boost on that which is at least decent you know what I mean so there's a thing that's definitely gonna be something that is definitely appreciated for one song another character that you can use is of course six six is good because he can uh, he of course has the ability to do mental shred which is important he has the ability to give a one song incantation might up uh, and he can also give her the uh, incantation boost skill when he's at five or more stacks of Eureka. Basically, when he's in this effect, 
Uh, he can spend five Eureka and then win song for the next two turns. Can rank up her own two cards with the uh, with the with the incantation boost up effect. So that's another good thing there as to why um, you should actually run her there. But if you want to know my honest opinion about whether you should pull Windsong as a character, I would just say yes. She is 100% worth. She is the best single target DPS this game has to offer. She is going to easily, easily outperform any of the main DPSs that you have in the game currently if you do optimize her gameplay, which is of course getting her around a good stack of measure and then building up her cards as appropriate. And yeah, I, I just do think that if, if you really want to go all in, P0 is again fantastic, good enough as is, but if you want the extra value, go P2. If you want full on power, just go Banana Nuke, go P5. But that's really just what I have to say. It's, she's, she's in my, in my opinion, unskippable. Like she's a must pull unit in my honest opinion. But I know a lot of people have said because of the new unit that comes out in patch 1.9 and her being limited, you can kind of just say get P0 wins on and then call it a day. But if again, if wins on someone you generally love, then yes, go P2. If you love her to pieces like I do, then go P5. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think about Windsong in the comment section below. Again, I think she's a must pull. I, I, I think she is definitely bar none, not a unit you should skip. If you're a new player, please pull this unit. Okay, <laughs> please pull this unit. She's going to be fan-freaking-tastic going forward when it comes to other things. So, anyway, let's talk about it. And, yeah, she's, she's just good, man. She's, 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 she's a great unit. Und undeniably one of the best units you can get and she's a very very good value unit because of just how strong she continues to be even currently in cn right now she is the strongest single target damage dealer so i mean really hard not to say it there so this has been your boy jess stinger and i'll see you guys next time peace